Aloha and good morning from East Chicago Marina. It is um, a uh, Monday morning and here you can see sunrise. It's beautiful. Still windy though. That is the bad part. Uh, we plan to go today to Hammond Marina by near to the uh, Illinois River where we will stage for tomorrow's entrance to the river and to the locks. That is our plan. If uh, the winds pick up and the waves pick up today, we won't be going until tomorrow. But today we'll be going out, getting some fuel, and try to make it to Hammond Marina. So follow our journey here on our boat story, on our boat Mahalo. Aloha, we are Sava, Cynthia, and Alex, along with our two dogs, Lucy and Shadow. We're traveling America's Great Loop, a 6,000 mile North American waterway from Florida to Canada and back down via the Mississippi. Follow us on this journey on our boat called Mahalo. We leave the protection of the East Chicago Marina heading into some fierce eight foot confused sea waves as we come around the steel plant. But we finally make the one hour journey to Hammond Marina for the night. Aloha and good morning from Hammond Marina here is just south of Chicago. It is Tuesday morning. Today is our flotilla six uh, going through the Illinois River after because um, all the locks were closed for three months. We all have to go in groups because there's like 300 boats that need to go through since October 1st. Um, it is now October 10, I think. Um, so anyway, so tomorrow this morning about 17 of us are going to go out. Um, it is just about sunrise here in uh, Hammond. Uh, I'll take you outside real quick. Uh, we are just getting ready to uh, check the uh, check the oil in the boat. Um, it's been very windy uh, from yesterday's journey. Not much has let up at all, but a beautiful, beautiful sunrise this morning here in Hammond um, as we're about to leave. So. Join us for the journey as we continue this morning to the west down the Illinois River. Today's part one journey from Hammond to Joliet will take us west on the Calumet River or Calsac just past the Interstate 94 Bridge. So I'm just taking a quick film of our friends who are over at the fuel docks this morning. I believe that's them. Or it might be someone else that's a black top. So, goodbye to the marina that we stayed at for one night. This is the fuel dock that we parked at when we first got here because we were swimming into the jetty or this rock piled wall. And we're saying goodbye to Hammond, which is the big area. And look, another boat's coming out right now after us. So we're all getting ready to line up. Some ducks over here next to the jetty. Very pretty. Look how the sun is hitting those windows and they're just glowing green. How pretty is that? Can we still have our blue glow lights on? It's making the paddleboard glow. Isn't that pretty? So this morning, our cable, our electric cable was so stiff from the frost overnight, we're letting it hang here on Alex's bicycle because we need it to be softer before we put it down inside. It wouldn't fold inside. Now here's the second boat coming out behind us. Um, I'm not sure how many total boats we have. 17. So we're coming on out. We're supposed to all meet over in two miles at seven. It's a little rocky, not rocky, it, it's rolling a little bit as we're even leaving the jetty, but we should be behind some protection for the two miles that we go um, over to join up at the Joliet Wall, is where we're all supposed to go. You can see the other boat is turned that corner. It's a little bit of like a Z-turn to go into the marina. And daylight is just coming along all this industrial area. We just turned Zava on the radio. He said Mahalo is outside. He's letting them know that we are out of the marina. And look at this sunset. 
I mean, sunrise, sorry, I need to wake up. Sunrise, so beautiful. Aloha, good morning. Uh, Alex, thank you for your help this morning. Mm -hmm. Zava's checking one last time. We've got the covers on, the Isenglass windows up here. They're not open because it's a bit brisk. Not sure what the actual temp is. I just know that it's chilly. It's 43 last night. It was supposed to go to 35 this morning. Beautiful sunrise though, beautiful sunrise. We've got some swells here, about two foot. The good thing is we have breakwaters here, um, right ahead of us here, at where Alex is looking. So as soon as we get a little closer to the river, we should be fine. I'm letting you guys watch the sunrise. Um, so beautiful in the camera. You can actually see it popping up now. Both to me, sunrise and sunset, that the actual sun seems to come up the horizon and down the horizon so much faster than when it's just going across the sky. But there you can see the brilliance coming up. Aloha. So we started all the nine boats that are in this flotilla are out. The other boats have already arrived at the, the first marina about uh, probably I think two hours from here. So you see some of them behind us here, there. And then we've got one over here. And of course, Mahalo. So join us as we go down the Illinois River. So this is more continuation. Currently I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, six boats out, plus us, that's seven. Um, I don't see anybody else coming out right at the moment, but isn't this nice? Oh, here's the other one. Sorry, we're directly in the sun. And so that makes eight boats. And I know somebody passed us already. We've invited anybody that wants to pass us to pass us. Some large tankers on the horizon. I'm going to look toward the front because I believe somebody passed us. So we should have somebody directly in front. So we're approaching the Illinois River entrance right here, and we're just looking, Alex, maybe to show you, but this waves crashing out there against the breakwater. Alex just noticed that. So I'll tell him, Alex. Yeah, like all those heavy swells are actually splashing against the breakwater. So we're so grateful for a breakwater here as we enter. Yeah, you can see all those white caps hitting it. We are following the leader boat of our flotilla and we're passing a barge and another little blue and white looks like a smaller barge as we're heading up here to this first bridge or crossing i'm not sure what this is that's going across the water so we are going very slow because otherwise we cause a wake in this channel and one pleasure craft not part of the loop group just went through and they were very they were going very fast and there was calls from them whether it was the barge captain or our own leader who asked them to slow down repeatedly and they never did so we're being respectful to go through and um, pretty cool this morning not a cloud in the sky very beautiful i am so glad that it did not rain because we had a frost last night so i can only imagine how slippery the deck would have been as we were trying to untie and leave the group. So very grateful that we did not have rain in addition to the frost that occurred last night. The leader has asked us to group up closer. You can see the bridge is not opening. See it going up?
can now see the bridge is starting to close already as the last boat just came through. So they literally only leave it open long enough for us to get through. So this is a very unique bridge. There is currently a train crossing on the lowest part. It's just flat cars, but you can see them moving along on the, on the lowest part. So there's three segments to this. There's this first part, which is really tall. Not sure of all of its purpose. Then you have the actual train bridge. And then you have the automobiles crossing on the top. So these are all different bridge systems. We're with our flotilla. There are two boats in front of us. And then behind us, we have a whole group of boats as well. This is the 100th Street Bridge, and they're getting ready to open it. Just saw one last semi-truck go over. You can see the yellow lights flashing on the front. So we're up here with our leader, the second the boat. There's one right next to us. And there's nine of us total going through this morning. Part of Flotilla Group 6 of the Great Loop. Here on my right are some of the large barges, commercial barges, that one is going to expect on the Mississippi. Very formidable. This is the 106th Street Bridge. And there is our flotilla of nine boats. The leader boat called and told the lockmaster there was nine of us to go through. You can see the cars waiting. Um, this is the time they told us to come through, which is interesting because you know this is a rush hour. People are trying to get to work. But we were, I'm sure the cars are not happy, but this is what, uh, this is what the organization uh, agreed with. So we have all of this, it's been pre-planned, which I think for those of you planning to do the loop, it would be, this is where the advantage of being a part of the group is key. Otherwise, it's hard. Our leaderboard is turning to the center. Zava and Alex saw a coyote or wolf. The wolves are so big. It's probably a coyote hit this close to town because coyotes are a lot in urban areas. But um, I don't think I saw it and I don't think the GoPro caught it. But pretty cool. It was trotting along here and was behind one of the bullocks. So very interesting. In the middle of town, got some wildlife in this little bit of scrubby, uh, unused land right here. So here we are, the three of us, a little little chilly. Alex is the one wearing a nice warm beanie. It says Haleakala, it's from the Crater Park on Maui. So Zava, what were you just saying you were thankful I for? I says, I am thankful. We always gotta be thankful for some, but definitely thankful it's not raining. It's not super windy in here. It's not fog. Um, so I'm very thankful for all of those things. All along this channel are these openings where barges can pull in and get loaded. So that looks we like were a new one too. It looks like a new channel. Yeah. We are seeing one was cleared, which we said that is real estate that is aimed for a business that is hoping to have 
barge access. And this one is actually a whole covered chute that things can be loaded and protected before they get on their barge. Very interesting. Somebody has spent a lot of time and effort to have that. It also looks like the way they built it was to go over the train track that's there. So even though you have this property next to the river, you still need to get your product up and over the train track. Very interesting. You know how you've heard the expression, beware of yellow snow? Look what's coming up. Yellow sand? Not sure. We're coming up to this yellow piles. I was trying to decide if it was a cover or if it was actually the product. I have no idea what this is. If you know, leave a note in the comments. Shadow's not sure about all this. Here's a vacuum. Alex says this is Torrance Avenue. And now you can see the name of the bridge right here in the middle. It's listed in gold letters. There's just enough to see that I have to keep crossing back and forth. And Shadow is very bravely trying to follow me. Did you see this uh, automotive plant right here? Alex says this is a Ford automotive plant. There it is, it says Ford right there. Over here on my right, you can see some smaller critters and one large white swan or goose. Crane right here with the rest of the smaller uh, waterfowl. So Zog is asking me to check my battery percentage. It says 66% mm -hmm. and 4 hours 17 on the opposite side. So I was checking out all the stats. Alex is trying to keep my little shadow calm who follows me everywhere while I'm filming. Mm -hmm. So you often hear his voice in the back. And Lucy, she's looking very docile there, but oh, her her voice has been heard on it today as well. Mm -hmm. They provide lots of audio track for Mahalo's journey. So we've tried to spare your ears. Sometimes we play music, but believe you me, they are in the background. And yes, I apologize for the noise that they do. So we're gonna look at some more of the flotilla boats. That's coming along behind back. us. Such a cool view. So all of a sudden you have this industrial area, right? Some beautiful swans, some beautiful swans right here. And then you have this, what looks like a very nice pasture, a green hill. Zav has just informed me that more than likely, this was a landfill. In other words, they have covered this up and there's garbage and other things hidden down below. So, to have a, a beautiful green hill here is nice. Aren't the swans pretty? You have two bigger swans and two smaller, almost like two different breeds there. The 130th Street Bridge. approaching our lock so we're going to be going into the time-lapse mode here so Alex and I have to get ready action aloha so we are in the O'Brien lock right here Alex is holding on all we have is these yellow bullards right here uh, to our cleat or whatever you want to call it to tie up to there's really no floating bullard or lines or anything else it's just one tie so I'm glad it's not that windy right now but it is more difficult as you can see here are the other people doing the same thing They're holding up this one line to go down 
the lock master actually said that we could just float in the middle. I'm not sure if I feel comfortable enough with that, but that's that's the plan right now is to go down this O'Brien lock. All right, so these are all the other looper boats in our flotilla right now. Um, we started the generator just so that we can um, just to charge the back thruster batteries while we're going. Uh, one boat is definitely just going to float in the middle is what they decided to do rather than try to um, try to tie up. Hopefully the next locks will have some lines of floating bullard or something of that nature or cable. Interesting enough, we got all these birds watching us because they probably have seen it a thousand times and know how to do these lines. Uh, we don't. And uh, they're just sitting there and they're going to laugh, I guess. What's your thoughts, Cindy? You see all those birds there? Yeah. <laughs> they're watching. Alex, what's your thought here? Well, this is a little unusual because the other locks, like on the ear canal and the uh, transceiver, they have like either a line or a uh, cable on the side. With this, you have to just uh, tie up to a bullock, which is the least efficient method to hang on to. I think it's made for barges, not for pleasure craft. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Interesting enough, it looks like the door is already opening. I think it went down maybe 18 inches or so. Um, and that's probably why he said uh, you can just float in the middle. There is no, there really is no current or anything like that. But if there were strong winds or anything like that, of course we'd want to have a better tie than just one, one place, one point of contact to the wall. But just my thought, we're going to be on our way here in just one moment. See here, that's the by spill bypass, I think, of the overflow. Aloha. So that O'Brien lock uh, overall was a very shallow lock, um, maybe a two foot drop today. Uh, the river is at a low stage to begin with, Cynthia, you see Cynthia up front here. Um, and we just passed that lock, we passed the marinas, which we slowed down for. And uh, here's, of course, Lucy. She's in charge of the whole operation. Um, she's awake. She wasn't sleeping. Very noisy bridge up above. Yeah. But beautiful day otherwise today. A little bit on the chilly side, but beautiful day. All right, so Marine Services Corp is where the other portion of our fleet stayed. Now unzip it real quick so you guys can get a clearer picture. But that's where they stayed overnight. Uh, to get a head start and uh, so half our fleet of 17 boats is actually up ahead and uh, heading off to Joliet where we're going to tie up with the uh, free wall tonight. Thank you for joining us for part one of the Great Loop from Hammond to Joliet. We love your comments and questions and on your way out, please be so kind as to hit that like button and most importantly, subscribe. It makes a world of difference to our channel. We'll see you again next time as we continue to the free wall in Joliet, Illinois. Aloha.